In today's video, I am going to show you how to create a comic style neon video effect in Premiere Pro, as you can see on the screen. This comic style neon video effect is perfect for music videos, promotional videos, and event videos. Let's get started. Alright, now we are inside Premiere Pro. As you can see on the timeline, I have got a stock video footage. For creating a comic style neon video effect, we have to use some Premiere Pro built-in effects. First, we have to duplicate the video clip two times, you can do this by holding the ALT key and clicking on the right mouse button. Then, drag the video clip one track above. So, we need a total of three video clips. After that, let's turn off the video layer 3 and 2. Now, we have to apply some effects to the bottom video. So, let's move over to the effects panel to apply an effect. This is a Lumetri color effect. Let's drag and drop the Lumetri color effect to the bottom video. Next, let's go to the effect controls panel to customize the Lumetri color effect. Firstly, let's open the basic correction parameter. And then, we have to make the saturation parameter value around 40. Alright, let's hide all the parameters of the Lumetri color effect for convenience. In the next step, let's move over to the effects panel to apply another effect. This is an auto levels effect. Let's drag and drop the auto levels effect to the bottom video clip. After that, I am going to add another effect. This is a posterized time effect. Let's drag and drop the posterized time effect to the bottom video clip. Next, let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize the effects. Now, we don't need change anything of the auto levels effect. And then, from the posterize effect, let's make the frame rate value around 12. In the next step, we have to turn on the middle video clip. Firstly, let's go to the effects panel to apply the posterize time effect to the middle video clip. After that, let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize the posterize time effect. Firstly, from the opacity panel, we have to change the blend mode. Let's select linear dodge. After that, from the posterize time effect, let's make the frame rate value around 19. Next, go to the effects panel to apply an effect. This is a find edges effect. Let's drag and drop the find edges effect to the middle video clip. In the next step, I am going to apply the invert effect. Let's drag and drop the invert effect to the middle video clip. And then, let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize the invert effect. And now, we don't need change anything of the find edges effect. After that, let's customize the invert effect. From the channel parameter, we have to select HLS. In the next step, go to the effects panel to apply another effect. This is a Lumetri color effect. Let's drag and drop the Lumetri color effect to the middle video clip. And then, go to the effect controls panel to customize the Lumetri color effect. Firstly, let's open the basic correction parameter. And then, let's make the temperature parameter value around 100. After that, we have to make the tint parameter value around negative 100. Next, we have to make the contrast parameter value around 100. And then, let's make the highlights parameter value around 100. And lastly, let's make the whites parameter value around 100. Now, you can see the changes on the program monitor. Alright, let's hide all the parameters of the Lumetri color effect for convenience. In the last step, let's go to the effects panel to apply another effect. This is a directional blur effect. Let's drag and drop the directional blur effect to the middle video clip. Next, move over to the effect controls panel to customize the directional blur effect. Firstly, let's make the direction value around 270 degrees. In the next step, let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the video. Now, let's click on the stopwatch icon of the blur length parameter. Let's make the blur length parameter value around 44. After that, move the time indicator 5 frames forward. Now we have to make the blur length parameter value around 50. Let's select all the keyframes. And then, right-click on the keyframes. After that, click on Auto Bezier. Next, let's copy the selected keyframes. And then, move the time indicator 5 frames forward. Now, we have to paste the keyframes. In the same way, copy and paste the keyframes into the whole video clip.
All right, now you can see the changes on the program monitor. In the next step, let's turn on the top video clip. After that, select the video clip and go to the effect controls panel. From the opacity panel, we have to change the blend mode. Let's select linear dodge. And then, we have to create a mask. Go to the opacity panel. And then, click on the create ellipse mask. Now, you can see on the program monitor, an ellipse mask has been created. Next, we have to open the rulers to resize the mask perfectly. Let's move over to the view panel. And then, click on the show rulers panel. Now you can see the ruler panel is open on the program monitor. In the next step, we have to pull the ruler, and we will take the perfect size. You can follow my program monitor to take your size. Now you can see I took a size perfectly. In the next step, the point on the right side of the mask should be pulled up to this position. And then, the point on the left side of the mask should be pulled up to this position. After that, the point on the upside of the mask should be pulled up to this position. And lastly, the point on the downside of the mask should be pulled up to this position. As you can see on the program monitor, this is the perfect size of our mask. Now, we have to make the mask feather parameter value around 250. And then, we have to turn on the box of the inverted parameter. Now, you can see the changes on the program monitor. Now, we don't need the rulers, so let's remove all the rulers. Next, click on the Show Ruler option to disable the Rulers panel. In the next step, we have to apply some effects. Let's move over to the Effects panel to add an effect. This is a Find Edges effect. Let's drag and drop the Find Edges effect to the top video clip. Now you can see the changes on the program monitor. Next, I am going to apply another effect. This is an Invert effect. Let's drag and drop the Invert effect to the top video clip. Next, move over to the Effect Controls panel to customize the applied effects. And now, we don't need to change anything of the Find Edges effect. After that, let's customize the Invert effect. From the Channel parameter, we have to select HLS. Alright, let's hide all the parameters of the Find Edges effect and the Invert effect for convenience. Next, let's move over to the Effects panel to add an effect. This is a Lumetri color effect. Let's drag and drop the Lumetri color effect to the top video clip. Next, move over to the Effect Controls panel to customize the Lumetri color effect. From the Basic Correction panel, we have to make the Temperature parameter value around 100. And then, let's make the Tint parameter value around negative 100. After that, we have to make the Exposure parameter value around negative 1.6. And then, let's make the Contrast parameter value around 100. Next, let's make the Highlights parameter value around 100. And lastly, we have to make the Whites parameter value around 100. Alright, let's hide all the parameters of the Lumetri color effect for convenience. In the next step, let's select the middle video clip. And then, we have to copy the directional blur effect. After that, select the top video clip. And then, let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the video. And now, we have to paste the directional blur effect. Alright, now you can see the changes on the program monitor. In the next step, let's move over to the project panel. Now we have to create an adjustment layer. Let's drag and drop the adjustment layer to the timeline in video layer 4. Next, let's go to the effects panel to apply an effect. This is a Lumetri color effect. Next, move over to the effect controls panel to customize the Lumetri color effect. From the Basic Correction panel, we have to make the Saturation parameter value around 200. After that, we have to make the Exposure parameter value around negative 1.5. And then, let's make the Contrast parameter value around 100. Next, let's make the Highlights parameter value around 61.3. And lastly, we have to make the Whites parameter value around 36.9. In the next step, go to the Vignette panel. From here, we have to make the amount parameter value around negative 2. Next, let's make the midpoint parameter value around 15. And lastly, we have to make the feather parameter value around 75. Alright, our comic style neon video effect creation is complete.
In this way, you can create a comic style neon video effect in Premiere Pro. So, let's preview. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like the video and leave a comment.